In this video, I want to talk about the conditional independence assumption and the role that this plays in the causal interpretation of econometrics. So the idea here is that we're trying to evaluate whether infrastructure spending within a given district within a conflict area actually causes a decline in violence within that area. And we spoke about in the last few videos how if the level of infrastructure spending which a region receives is randomly assigned, so independent of that particular area's characteristics. So DI is equal to zero for some states and DI is equal to one for some other states and the status in terms of infrastructure spending is randomly assigned. Then in that situation, we know that the simple difference of means, so delta mu, actually evaluates to the average causal effect. In this video, I want to talk about the situation when we cannot assume that DI is randomly assigned. So that means that we can't write that the potential level of violence in a state had they received infrastructure spending and the potential level of, of violence within a state had they not received infra infrastructure spending are independent of DI. So we cannot assume that in this particular circumstance here because we're assuming that there is some sort of selection criteria which determines whether a state receives infrastructure spending in the first place. But what the conditional independence assumption states is that essentially we might be able to say that V1i and V0i, conditional on the level of income in that particular state, might be independent of DI. So let me just say that again, conditional on the observed characteristics of that state of which income might be one of those observed characteristics and in theory we should really sort of include all the other variables which might be different between the two different groups. Then conditional on those variables, it might be the case that the potential level of violence within that state, had they or had they not received infrastructure spending, might actually be independent of the treatment status. And after we've defined the conditional independence assumption, what we can do then is we could say, well, conditional on the level of income, then we can evaluate what the average causal effect of the treatment was. So in other words, what is the average causal effect of infrastructure spending? And essentially what that is, is, is that is the expectation of VI given the level of income in that particular state, if we think that income is perhaps the only variable which matters in this context, which it's probably not, but just to keep things simple, I'm gonna keep it like that. And given that DI is equal to one, and then we take off the level or, or the expectation rather of VI given a state's level of income and given that DI is equal to zero. So that's pretty similar to the basic difference in means. The difference being that I've included this sort of condition on income as well. And further, we know that we can actually evaluate this top expression. We can actually rewrite this as being the expectation of V1i because that's actually what's observed in the situation when that state did actually receive infrastructure spending. And similarly, we can replace the bottom expression with the expectation of V0i. And then what we can do is we can actually use the conditional independence assumption. So the conditional independence assumption says that essentially if we include income in our set of conditioning variables, then the treatment status of that particular area is completely irrelevant. So we can take di equal to naught and di equal to one from these expressions. And because they're both conditioned on income then, we can combine both of these expressions into a single expectation. So then we have the expectation of V1i minus V0i given the level of income, so income i. And it's pretty easy to see now that this is exactly what we set out to actually get, which was the average causal effect given a state's level of income. Because remember that the causal effect of the actual infrastructure spending here was defined as V1i minus V0i. So we define the average causal effect conditional on nothing as just the expectation of delta i, which is just the expectation of V1i minus V0i. Um, but then what we could do is we could say, well, conditional on the level of income, let's define what we call the average causal effect conditional on the level of income. So that would just be the expectation of delta i given the level of income i. And it's easy to see how this expression on the right-hand side would then be exactly equal to that which is on the bottom. And the conditional independence assumption 
is going to allow us to actually formulate econometric models, which allow us to, in some, to, to some extent at least, to evaluate the average causal effect. It's not this sort of unconditional average causal effect, but it's the average causal effect conditioned on a number of variables. Or put another way, it's the average causal effect holding a number of important determinants of violence constant.